Well, folks, uh, we sent a handout out um, ahead with the joining details yesterday. So if you've got that, that handy, you might like to take that uh, and scribble a few notes as we go through. But I'm going to just dive straight in as we think about our topic this morning of leadership in lockdown, uh, rhythms, rest and focus. Exercising leadership in a crisis uh, demands several things of us, invites three particular things of us. Uh, firstly, uh, agility and inquisitiveness, yet always reconnecting people back to the big question, why? Why do we exist as a church? Secondly, it invites of us discernment, uh, the ability to interpret the times, to try and make sense of what's going on in our society, in our church, in our community, in the lives of those we know in our own lives as well, uh, listening to what God is saying and prompting. And thirdly, it invites of us presence, the ability to connect with people as a non-anxious presence holding gospel hope and godly faith with a naming of reality and courageous honesty. But here's a truth. These three things are enormously demanding. They require a lot of us. And that's why the focus of this webinar is so important. How do we keep going and keep focused for the long haul? I love this passage in Acts where Paul is speaking to the Ephesian elders as he departs from them, says all sorts of fascinating things. He admits to tears as he serves the Lord, uh, as he seeks to encourage others to turn to God. He, he speaks about the future hardships that he, he fears are coming his way, possible imprisonment and difficulties. And then in verse 24, he says this, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task. Well, you may have heard of those who've talked about preferring to burn out rather than rust out in service of the Lord. But here Paul offers us a third alternative, which is to pace out. And the difficulty of pacing out at this particular time is that it's hard to know how long this crisis is going to last. So if I may, I'd like to ask a few personal questions of you. Uh, how are you doing at this time? Uh, how are you doing in terms of healthy rhythms around prayer, the scriptures, exercise, diet, work, fun, blending the different elements of life? If you had to place yourself on a scale from struggling to sorted, where would you put yourself on this one? How are you doing in terms of good rest, taking a Sabbath, working from a place of rest, holidays and sleep, where would you put yourself on a scale from struggling to sorted? And how are you doing in terms of motivation and focus, uh, productivity, fruitfulness, the ability to get on with stuff? Where would you place yourself on that scale? Don't take too long, just go with your gut response. Well, wherever you've placed yourself, my hope is that something of this next hour that we've got together will actually enable us to move just a little bit further in this direction. And if you're in that category where everything is sorted in all three areas, life is beautifully blended, you're personally full of energy, highly, mot highly motivated with a clear focus on what to do, great. Uh, but I hope this webinar still will be helpful as you reflect on how to support others of us who are struggling and are not quite so sorted. And if you are struggling, believe me, you're in good company. All the research amongst church leaders shows today that many of us are exhausted and struggling with issues of focus. And there are obvious reasons why. Let me suggest four. Uh, change. The amount of change that we have experienced has significantly increased over these last 12 weeks. And it's change that has been imposed on us and change is stressful. There's been a decrease in our normal rhythms. A colleague of mine said recently, we rely instinctively on repeatable rhythms. When they're broken, it affects us. And many of our normal rhythms have gone. It is simple as just going to the coffee shop each day to get our cup of coffee. Uncertainty has increased. And with that, anxiety increases. So it's harder to focus. Unpredictability increases. So we think it's not worth being proactive about anything. Complexity increases, so we struggle with energy because everything is more draining. And then fourthly, there's been a decrease in normal social contact. Those of you who know me will know that I'm a mad extrovert, and I'm finding just not meeting people really hard work. 
But actually my introvert friends say they've had enough of it as well. They're longing to get back to some more normal social contact. So by a way of aiding us in our reflection, uh, let's find out how we're doing. And I'm gonna put up a, a little poll on the screen and invite you to answer the questions that come up. Uh, there are five questions and you'll be able to choose just one option for each of the questions and you'll need to scroll down through to the bottom to see the next one. Question number one there is which of these words most re resonates with you at this time? Don't overthink it, just go with your gut response. This is a poll we did last month and we're tracking where leaders in churches are at this time. So just go with your gut response, click on the relevant word and then scroll down and you'll see there's where are you on a scale of one to five, where one equals struggling and five equals sorted for healthy rhythms. And then scroll down and you'll see the third question, same scale for good rest, scroll down, same one for fruitful focus. And then a, a question about holidays. And then when you finish, just hit submit and your poll, your results will be recorded. So just take about a minute to do this. Um, about 12% uh, of you have already done it, which is great, keep going. Just go with your gut response, don't overthink. And I'm afraid some of you may not be able to do it. We're aware that on some devices, polls don't work, but the majority of you should be able to. Apologies to those who can't. That's great, that's about 50% of us do it, just about 30 more seconds. And we'll just see where we are as uh, we reflect individually and where we are as a group. That's fab, that's 70% of us done, just 15 more seconds. Work your way through down to the bottom and then submit when you get there. Just uh, five more seconds just for the last 10% of you to get the poll concluded. Four, three, two, one. Great, thanks so much for doing that. Um, I'm sure you'd love to see the results, but I'm not gonna show you them now. <laughs> I'll show you them a little later on. And they are, as I can see, fascinating. We'll come back to them. So let me, if I may, offer three thoughts about things that might help us with the realities of what we're facing. They're rather obvious ones, uh, but I think sometimes it's helpful to return to basics at a time like this. Here's my first suggestion. To review and refresh our rhythms. It's easy to lose connection with helpful rhythms that have served us well in the past when a crisis hits. It's also easy to get stuck in rhythms that may have served us well in the first 12 weeks of this crisis, but are not serving us so well now. And if we can be frank, it's also easy to have lost all sense of rhythm in this crisis. So now is a good time to review. Here's a suggestion. Take 15 minutes each week to review and refresh your rhythms. What is working well, what isn't, and what might be a more helpful pattern? And perhaps particularly to focus on building in significant points in the day. Something that I'm finding enormously helpful at the moment is to go for a midday walk, something I never used to do, because I find being on screen all morning just exhausting and getting a break and going out and getting some exercise and some fresh air in the middle of the day is an enormous help. Well, let me dive a little deeper into this thing of rhythms. When we're working with uh, church leaders, we talk about there being five base rhythms. And they are built on uh, Rangan Chatterjee's excellent book called The Four Pillar Plan. We've added prey to his move, eat, relax and sleep. And these base rhythms are great ones to think and reflect on. Pray. In times of stress, many find structured or liturgical prayer is a great way to pray. Uh, move. Um, those who are experts on being on screen tell us that every 20 minutes we'll need 20 seconds to look at least 20 feet away from a screen in order to keep our eyes in a good and relaxed place. And every hour we'll need two minutes at least away moving in order to keep energy going through the day. Eat. Well, I guess we all know how easy it is to just snack through a day. Well, getting in or healthy alternatives will enable us to have more energy by eating things that will energize us rather than de-energize us. Uh, relax. Uh, when we can't get out so much, it's good to have identified an immersive hobby that engages us, relaxes us, and helps us to unwind from all that we're involved with. Sleep. 
Uh, you may know that uh, those who are experts on sleep tell us that we really need to be off all screens at least 30 minutes, preferably 60 minutes before we go to sleep. And that will help our quality of sleep. Well, I've just mentioned a few things. We've actually created a handout uh, with five simple suggestions uh, in each of those columns. And in an a, um, email we'll send you out after this event, uh, there's going to be a connection to this, if that would be of interest to you. So great time to review our base practices. And yet I'd like to dive just a little deeper to this thing of rest because in all our work and listening to leaders around the country, this is something lots of us are struggling with. And we have heard people talk about some of the difficulties of taking a day off and also the difficulties, of course, of having a holiday. And in the little poll we've just done, we've been doing this poll with a number of other groups, we're discovering that lots of people have not had a holiday since March. And they've missed their post Easter break. They've missed the May half term break. And of course, for understandable reasons, who wants to, if you're working from home, holiday from home as well. So we've been reflecting on this and just want to offer a few thoughts. I recognize, of course, that as we talk about holiday, holidaying from home for those who work from home is far from ideal. Most of us don't want to do it. And also recognize that we're in different circumstances. Some of us will be living on our own. And the thought of holidaying on our own does not fill us with joy. Others of us will be living with young children at home. And actually the thought of being at home yet more, again, does not fill us with joy. Some of us are living in beautiful settings with an acre of garden looking out onto lovely countryside. And some of us are living in settings which are not at all conducive to relaxation and rest. Some of us are living in contexts where people will respect our boundaries and some where people will struggle with our boundaries. But recognizing those realities, and as we've listened and as I've reflected on my own desire to take holiday, here are four things that might help. Very simple. Take it. I think many of us are thinking we won't bother with holiday. We'll hold on hope that restrictions will be lifted in time for us to have a normal summer holiday. But the danger is they might not be. And we could get to September having not had a holiday. And it's around September time that a whole raft of other stuff is going to kick off and we're going to need to be up the very best of our game in terms of our own leadership. So take a holiday. Secondly, plan it. We may need to plan it more than we normally would. I was talking to uh, a clergy person who was telling me that she's an introvert on the Myers-Briggs scale and she's a perceiver, a P on the Myers-Briggs scale. She hates planning holidays. But she realized in a holiday she recently took, she had to plan it with a much greater level of detail than normal. And it helped her to have a good holiday. All sorts of things that we may need to plan, plan meetups, virtual and physical, uh, plan how we're going to do it with others if we have others to do holiday with, but plan things uh, that will bring us energy and recreation. Um, spend on it. Uh, there's a temptation, isn't there? Uh, to not spend on a holiday unless we're going somewhere. Well, that sort of holiday may not come this year. So why not spend on the holiday that you can have? Uh, one person told me they'd set up a beach at home. They bought in a whole load of sand and a big swimming sort of um, a pool thing that they could construct and they created a beach in their garden. Um, plan to buy a bike or a canoe so you can do some activities you've always wanted to do pan to buy a cheap mobile so you can turn your work one off and just give the number to those who you want to be able to contact you buy a new board game create a special space get disney plus and have some fun moves in your nights spend on the holiday and fourthly protect it set up alternative first responses so that people know who to go to if something means that they need contact with someone and then agree terms of contact between that first response person and yourself. If you work from home, put a lock on the study door. I have one clergy person who literally bought a clasp and a padlock and gave the key to someone else. Make sure you turn off your phone so you can't be interrupted. Protect it because you'll need this holiday just as much, if not more so, than taking a normal holiday. Well, we've written, uh, listening to other people uh, we've written a little guide to holidays and again we'll give you access to that it's actually on the padlet board as well 
So the first thing to do is to review and refresh our rhythms. In much shorter way, let me mention two other big things. Keep in touch with yourself. Self-awareness is at the heart of good leadership. And we're all impacted by what is happening physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, relationally. So we need to keep in touch with what's going on in here. And there are several things that can help us in healthy self-reflection. Engagement daily with the scriptures. Journaling, reflective writing is a great way to aid self-reflection. And again, we've created a little guide which we've posted on the Padlet board to help with that if you've not done it before. The exam as a way of praying at the end of the day to reflect in a prayerful way on what has gone on through the day. And then fourthly, conversation with others, uh, key people in our lives to chat about how are we really doing? What's going on inside us to keep in touch with ourselves? And if I may practice a little bit of self-compassion, it's okay not to be okay. I was talking to another church leader and she was telling me that three days into a holiday she had recently, she was doing fine. And then on the fourth day, she found herself in tears for the whole day as things just caught up with her, the losses, the grief, the struggles, the uncertainties. And she spent a day in tears. She said it was actually an enormously helpful experience because she realized what was going on inside herself and gave herself time to process it. Let's be compassionate with ourselves and let's keep in touch with what's actually going on. And then lastly, order what you can order. If we're struggling with focus and motivation, we're not alone, many are. And I love that Anglican prayer that we pray as part of daily prayers, our morning prayer, uh, where we ask God to order us in all our doings to do that which is right in your own eyes. Well, it's hard to do that when everything is kicking off around us, but here are two little tools that might help us with the ordering of what we can order. The first is called circle of influence and circle of concern. Take a large piece of paper and draw two circles on it. The first label circle of influence and the second label circle of concern. And then put everything that you can influence, you can do something about into the circle of influence and everything you can't do anything about put into the circle of concern. And what this little exercise does is it helps us to tease out the difference between things we can do something about and things we can't do something about and begins to bring perspective. And those things in the circle of influence, we can review them, we can order them and then do something about them. Those that are in our circle of concern, well, just naming them can be helpful. And then, of course, we can pray about them and we might be able to share them with colleagues or loved ones, because sometimes that just helps us in the process of dealing with things we're concerned about. So there's the first tool. Here's the second tool, which will particularly help with the circle of influence stuff. Identify what's called the daily big three. I mentioned this on our previous webinar, but it's such an important thing. I want to mention it again. Choose three things that you're going to do today and write them down at the start of the day. And please note that this is everything in life, not just work life. It might be something to do with your home or with loved ones, as well as a work item. What are the three things that if by the end of the day you've done them, it will have been a good day? Write them down at the start of the day and it will bring focus to your day. I find when I do this, I am nearly always able to get those three things done. I get a whole bunch of other stuff done as well, but I get those three things done. Michael Hyde is the one who introduced me to this concept and he's written much more about this. And on the Padlet board, you'll find there's a link to further resources about the daily big three. So as we uh, reflect on leadership in lockdown, on keeping focused and keeping going for the long haul, or to use Paul's words, to run the race before us and complete the task. There is no doubt it's a challenging task. And whilst we may wonder if we're up to it, the good news is God is. Nothing about this has surprised him and he is still working his purposes out and amazingly wants to use ordinary people like you and me in those purposes leading his people 
to serve his world, to bring his kingdom. Folks, let's review and revise our rhythms. Let's keep in touch with ourselves and let's order what we can order that we might serve God's purpose as well. So we're just going to offer a couple of minutes for reflection, a bit of personal space. And uh, as you reflect, just scribble some things down. What's resonated with you? What might you like to take into the conversation you're about to have in the chat room with others? What questions might you like to ask? Let's just have a couple of minutes of quiet and do a little bit of self-reflection. And then when the time comes to the end, Pam will introduce how we're going to do the breakout rooms. Okay, folks, our time is up. Lovely to have a bit of time to reflect. Uh, we're going to do a bit of that together now and go into breakout rooms again. You'll get longer this time and there'll be some questions for you to reflect on in the chat, see where they take you. Uh, you will, as I said before, need to reopen chat when you get into your breakout room to see what's there. Um, during your discussion, if you've got useful ideas, please add them to the Padlet board. Um, and if you've got questions, please put them on the chat when you come back. Take a note of them and then you can either ask, uh, yeah, and then ask them on the chat and we'll have some Q&A. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a good chat in your group. Uh, and we're going to do some Q&A now. And so it's time for questions and comments because there are so many of us, we can't do the wavy hand thing. Um, so if you've got a question to ask, please put it in the chat room. We've got a few, uh, there's been a really interesting discussion in the chat, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, about holidays um, and how on earth can we take holidays well in lockdown. I wonder, James, if you've got anything to add to that, for, particularly for people who've got no one else to do the tech in their situation, how can we put all of that down? Yes, um, so a number of you have commented, and I think this is great, um, two possibilities one is uh, why not share a church service link up with another church and share a church service with them so you will cover their holiday and they will cover your holiday and actually encourage people to go online to a different service just as you would get somebody in to take your service if you're on holiday actually you get them to go to a different service and um, second option is that the Church of England is running centrally a whole bunch of resources and services so you could get them to connect with those during your holiday time give everybody a break from the tech stuff that they're doing um, so I, I just encourage you to do that and take a full holiday with the Sunday off as well for those of us who have responsibility for Sundays. Thank you so much. Uh, other questions that have come up um, that thing about the daily big three James does it work as a weekly discipline as well? Yes um, Michael Hyatt actually uh, in his uh, writing talks about there being a daily big three a weekly big three and even a, a termly big three so you can certainly use it uh, for a weekly big three and, and and in essence what you're doing is you're taking your circle of influence because there's going to be a ton of stuff in there 
and you're yeah. working out actually i can't do all of those things now what's the thing i am going to do this week what's the thing i am going to do this day um so yeah definitely great idea Be so, so your circle of influence is not everything you could do or you put everything you could do and then work out what you actually yes do. It, it is everything you could do because that's the advantage it yeah. gets stuff out of our head and onto paper yeah. And again, research which looks at how the brain works actually helps us to understand that keeping stuff in our head actually takes energy. So if you can get stuff out of your head, it gets rid of the energy that's being taken up to do that. So everything goes into the circle of concern, but it's not everything you are going to do. It's just everything you yeah. could do. And out of that, you identify your big three for the week, big three for the day. OK, there's a, another question asking if we at CPAS could um, act as brokers really offering a web, web page to link churches together across the country to do pulpit swaps um or ah. cover for one another so that might yeah. be something we need to think about interesting idea yeah and someone else suggesting that by visiting other churches really creative ideas come back to our churches there's a couple of uh, recommendations of good books on rest uh, that people might like to think about um, someone yeah, else can I just on... recommend one yeah. as well, Pam? Yeah, do. Um, the, the one on rest I'd really recommend is John Mark Comer's book, The Ruthless Elimination mm -hmm. of Hurry. Um, it, it is just a superb book. And you'll find on the Padlet board, I've put a link to some free material that he has on his website, uh, which you can watch around the four main disciplines, one of which is rest, is Sabbath rest. And he's done a brilliant video and a little workbook so people could access that for free as well. OK, thank you. There's another huge question, which may be another webinar, but um, right. we only don't only have to deal with our own need for rest uh, and rhythms and focus. We have to and will have to in weeks to come deal with huge amounts of collective trauma. Yes. Uh, and uh, one question was any suggestions for how we lead in those circumstances? Um, now, this isn't my area of expertise, but again, I will put a link on the Padlet board after the webinar to some really good resources that have been written about how to deal with collective trauma. And one of the interesting phrases they use in those resources is people talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, actually, in this scenario, we're in present traumatic stress disorder. There is a collective level of anxiety, concern, fear and um, uh, and actually helping people in the present not just when it's past is one of the challenges so um, I'll, I'll put that material up on the Padlet board after the webinar. Thank you and a follow-up to that really is that as this goes on longer people are getting tired and tetchy yeah. and yeah. arguments are far more likely to break out so the question is how do we acknowledge this with our churches and help them to be more patient? Yes so one of the things that leaders do is name reality and so this is one of the things we need to name uh, and we need to do it carefully sensitively graciously but i think it's so important to name some of this reality uh, to talk about the fact that we're tired um, that anxiety levels are still high uncertainty is still high and allow people to have a conversation about this stuff. And here's the second little tip as leaders. One of the most important ways to name reality is also to be vulnerable in the naming of reality. In a very small way, I tried to model that at the start of this webinar when Pam was asking me those two questions at the start, when I talked about my own tiredness and my own recognition of stuff that's going on inside myself. I think vulnerability, appropriate vulnerability, is a really important thing. We're in this as well as others. And so naming reality and being vulnerable uh, are two ways that we might help our people to have conversations. Also people um, are feeling, I've had two conversations so far in this webinar about people feeling a double whammy um, with the Black Lives Matter thing, which yes. is something that is so huge and so yeah. important. Yes. Um, and yet it, it comes at a point when a lot of people are exhausted. Um, how can we begin to process that as well as everything else any yes um, I, uh, thank you for raising that because of course um that is a huge huge thing and um enormously complex full of emotion and uh, and and um concerns um I, I think we have to be realistic about our capacity we cannot do everything 
So we have to make choices about what we are going to do. But another little leadership thing is this. When we make choices about what we are going to do, let people know about the things we're not going to do. That we, so that they know we've made a definite choice. And the other thing is, in making those choices, it's always wisest to make them with others. So, so have some conversation with church wardens or whoever you share leadership with, so that it's not just your choice, it's a, a, a choice of those in leadership. Mm -hmm. It'll be a wiser choice and you'll have a bit of support for those who won't agree with your choice and people won't agree. The other little resource that I've uh, just started um, is the book, uh, We Need to Talk About Race. And I think if you want to explore Black Lives Matter a little bit further, Ben Lindsay, I think is the name of the author, we need to talk about race. It's actually on the SPCK website for 99p as a download ebook, and is one of the books lots of folks recommend around this topic. So that might be worth having a look at if you want to think about it a little further. Uh, again, have a look at the chat for advice too about how to help, to help people who are offline. Um, another question, I've noticed people in my congregation are being more than normally grumbly. Any yeah. advice on how to respond as a leader? Yes. Um, well, a little bit of what I said earlier on about name that as a reality uh, so yeah. that people actually can recognise, yeah, we are feeling a bit grotty and grumbly. Um, there's been a term which has been given to it, it's called COVID blues. And uh, the two Harvest Business Review articles that I've put in the email resource that you can pick up after this webinar that are writing about that reality. Um, so it is a reality. Let's name it. Uh, and let's invite people to step up to give of their best, to exercise the one another's of the New Testament, to forgive one another, be patient with one another, sing psalms and actually we can't do that one um, to encourage one another to love one another because it's the one another's of the new testament that will enable us to act as god's people and the only way we can do that is to be dependent on god's spirit humanly this is not easy but the spirit of god can do amazing things in us so let's invite people to, to be prayerful dependent on the spirit to step up and do their best to live by the one another's of the new testament as well uh, earlier on in the chat, someone mentioned that the Bishop of Liverpool has recommended that their clergy should have two days off a week, not just one over the next two or three weeks. The question um, was, which I don't think we can answer, um, is have other bishops been saying the same thing? Yes, the Bishop of Peterborough has done the same thing. So I know two bishops oh, okay. who have done that. Uh, yeah. And I think I've heard of one or two others have suggested, um, you know, uh, take care of yourself, self-care being an important part. Mm. So good for the Bishop of Liverpool for naming that. I think that's a good thing to do. And I'd um, actually, Pam, it might be worth us just sharing the results of the poll at this point before yeah, we right. forget it. Because I want to just mention something from that. So I'm gonna pop them up on the screen for you. Uh, and you'll, uh, let me just mention a couple of things about each of them. You'll need to scroll down to see the results of the later questions. Interesting folks, that last month, when we did question one, energized was the highest response overall. Uh, as we're doing this poll this month, exhausted is. Uh, I'm not surprised by that, but it is interesting to see it being reflected in the poll. Second question in terms of healthy rhythms. Overall, we're not doing too badly, which is great to see. Um, although, of course, some of us are struggling more than others. In terms of good rest, a mm, mm, bit more mixed there. Uh, some good, some not so good, some struggling uh, inevitably. In terms of fruitful focus, again, uh, quite a challenge there, but here is the really stunning result. 70% of us have not taken a holiday since March and 12% of us who did only managed some of it. Folks, um, with as much love and pastoral concern as I can, can I urge you to get that holiday in the diary? To take it, to plan it, to spend on it and to protect it. We will not be in a good place if we have not taken significant rest. Mm. And there is so much being asked of us as leaders at this time. If we don't take some rest, we will not get through this well. Interesting results, Pam. They are, aren't they? Um, inevitably, questions have come up about big decisions for the future, which may be something um, we can talk a little bit about after the end of this webinar if people want to stay. Um, also about how to help people who have disengaged. Yes. Uh, but again, 
Yeah, do you want to just quickly yeah. say about something about that before we finish? Yes, so the results of surveys both here and overseas are showing that around 20 to 30 percent of regular attenders have not engaged at all with online worship. So there is a really important thing that we're going to need to do to re-engage those people. And if you'd like to talk a little bit more about that, uh, we're going to have to draw this part of the webinar to a close, but I'd love to talk more about that after the uh, end of the formal part of the webinar. Great. Well, thank you folks for coming. It's been really good to be with you. I hope we've given you some things to think about, things that have helped you, things that inspire you and fuel you. Um, remember that you can find really good useful stuff in the chat so you might want to look at that before you go um, james and i are going to hang around for the next 30 minutes if you want to stay you're very welcome uh, to chat about um, more things there is a feedback form it would help us enormously because this is a new adventure for us doing webinars it would be really helpful if you could um, fill that in before you disappear uh, and before we go shall we just um, commit each other to god and to pray for his spirit to fill us. Pam, just before we pray, it might be worth just mentioning the feedback form is linked in the chat. So you'll find the link in the chat. And also there's a link to a, a resource page um, uh, following this with some of the resources that I've mentioned. And you can download that before you leave. Just worth mentioning they're there in Thank the you. chat. You might have to scroll up to find them now because people are making great comments, but uh, they're there. OK, thank you so much. Let's pray. Breathe in us, Holy Spirit, that our focus may be holy. Act in us, Holy Spirit, that our work rhythms may be holy. Draw our hearts, Holy Spirit, that we may rest well in your holiness. Guard us then, Holy Spirit, that we may be holy in your sight. Mm. To the glory of God our Father and in the name of our Saviour Jesus. Amen. Amen.